Hello students, today we are going to discuss the topic of working capital management. It's very important in the context of financial management to understand what is short term financial management all about. So short term financial management or the other name for which is working capital management talks about how a company should manage its items of working capital. The more common items which I'm sure you must be familiar with are uh, inventories, debtors, cash and creditors. Firms invest almost 25 to 50 percent of their uh, total investment um, in the items of uh, current assets. So that requires a lot of attention of the managers. So we know that capital entails a cost and hence working capital management is required to be given its due attention by the managers. So uh, let's start with the topic. So let me give you um, an overview of working capital cycle in the context of a trading firm to have the better understanding of the concept of working capital management. So let's see what are the routine business operations of a trading firm and how these business operations influence the quantum of working capital investment in the business and what is the desirable style of conducting these operations in order to achieve efficiency. So um, in any trading firm the first step is uh, that the firm will have to place the order for the goods in which it uh, wants to deal and uh, with the suppliers. Next comes the supplier will then ship the order and build the form. Then the third step is about shipment. So once the shipment is done and it is received by the firm, it goes into the inventory. The fourth step is customer places the order and firm bills the customer. Next, customer settles his account and finally supplier's bill is settled. Now, if you see this entire cycle, couple of things are visible, which uh, tell us that how the trading firm does its business operations. So, uh, and uh, let me also tell you one thing that step five and step six uh, may have the interchangeable positions. So that means that customers accounts may be settled later and suppliers bill may be, you know, they may be, uh, paid before the customers pay their money. So that kind of uh, swapping between step 5 and step 6 is possibility based uh, depending on upon the business scenario and the industry practices. Nonetheless, one thing which we need to understand is that based on these routine business operations of a trading firm, several current assets and current liabilities are uh, will come into picture. So the moment supplier builds the firm, uh, accounts payable will come into picture. The moment in uh, shipment is received by the firm, inventories will come into picture. And the moment uh, sales is done, customers are built, uh, accounts pay, accounts receivables will come into picture. So uh, these are the most uh, common items of working capital, debtors, inventory and creditors. And uh, you can, we can see how they are linked with the routine business operations. Now, coming on to the goals of the financial managers in managing these, the operating cycle or the cash conversion cycle, which is the same thing as working capital cycle, which we discussed in the earlier slide. So uh, let's see what should be the goal of financial manager to delay paying accounts as long as possible without suffering any penalties. Next is to maintain minimal raw material inventories without causing manufacturing delays. Then to use as little labor as possible to manufacture the product while maintaining quality. To maintain minimal finished goods inventory without losing sales. To offer customers the most attractive credit terms possible on trade credit to maximize sales while minimizing the risk of non-payment. To collect cash payments on accounts receivable as fast as possible to close the loop. Now all the goals mentioned on this slide indicate just one thing that one needs to be quite efficient in terms of the operating cycle uh, so as to minimize it as much as possible. And that is possible only if we try to minimize our investments in current assets and if we try to maximize the credit that we get from our suppliers. Coming on, technically we define operating cycle. So day sale inventory shows how long the firm keeps its inventory before selling it. The ratio of the inventory balance to the daily cost of goods sold. Day sale outstanding estimates how long it takes on an average for the firm 
to collect its outstanding accounts receivable balances also called the average collection period. So um, operating cycle begins when the firm purchases the raw materials and ends when the firm collects cash payments on its credit sales. Uh, coming on to the cash conversion cycle. So cash conversion cycle also incorporates the days payables outstanding, the credit that we avail from our suppliers. So it does not start until the firm actually pays for its inventories. It represents the length of time between the cash outflow for materials and cash inflow from sales. Days payables outstanding tells how long a firm takes to pay off its suppliers for the cost of inventory. And the formula for cash conversion cycle is days sales um, inventory, days sales outstanding uh, are added and days uh, payable outstanding is deducted. Now, let me uh, um, show you um, one thing which is important for understanding the cash conversion cycle uh, is that uh, lower the cash conversion cycle, better is the working capital management for a firm. If I take an example with you, suppose there are two friends, Mr. A and Mr. B, and they are having their garment stores in a, a leading shopping mall. Both have annual turnover of rupees 10 crores. However, Mr. A's cash conversion cycle is 30 days, while Mr. B's cash conversion cycle is 60 days. This indicates that Mr. A takes less time in completing one working capital cycle as compared to Mr. B. This means B will have to invest more in working capital as compared to A because of his inefficient style of carrying routine business operations. He may be holding inventory for a longer period or may be given more credit to his customers. Um, alternatively, this may be reflection of lower credit period he might be enjoying from his suppliers. But uh, let me tell you one thing, more investment means negative impact for ROI or the profitability of a firm. More the investment, lower will be the uh, return percentage. So it's always desirable that we invest just the sufficient amount in our working capital assets because uh, it will have the negative impact on ROI if it is beyond a desirable level. Uh, let me show you uh, one example. Uh, now you could see here on the slide for based on the financial year 2020 uh, figures, um, a leading firm Apple, I think all of us are familiar with, you can see the cash conversion cycle of Apple is minus 71 days. Whereas uh, for the same period for US IT sector, it is 58 days a positive figure. Uh, how is it, like I mentioned earlier on, that lower the cash conversion cycle, better it is. And here you could see that there is a negative cash conversion cycle for Apple. Now, how is that possible for a firm to do? Low, uh, negative cash conversion cycle connotes collection from customers is prior to payment to suppliers, strong market position of the firm and sound business practices result in this. So Apple being uh, a strong, uh, having a strong market position can do that. It is having a bargaining power, uh, both with respect to its customers as well as with respect to its suppliers. And that's how it is able to enjoy a credit period, which is much larger than the credit it is giving to its own customers because of which there is a cash conversion cycle uh, of a minus 71 days, which is a tremendous thing to achieve for any business because technically that reduces or rather that, you know, makes the investment to be done in working capital um, almost um, zero on the part of the firm because its entire cash conversion cycle is being funded by the uh, firm's suppliers or the trade creditors, as you could see through the figures. So that's a wonderful thing. And many more firms have been uh, able to do this, um, have been able to do this um, uh, as a matter of their managerial prudence. Uh, to name some, like we have HUL, we have, we have Microsoft, uh, we have uh, Hero Motor Corp. Uh, firms, uh, these uh, firms, they have the market, uh, strong market position, and hence they are able to have a negative uh, working capital or a negative cash conversion cycle. So uh, that's a desirable thing. That's the uh, ultimate thing to achieve for any business house. I would like to share with you further a 2020 working capital scorecard prepared by CFO Hackett Group. Uh, this gives you a picture of uh, 
uh, 1000 leading firms of us how their efficiency has declined in terms of working capital management practices uh, in the year in the financial year 2019 as compared to financial year 2018 so we could see that uh, uh, in the year 2019 companies relied heavily on uh, you know uh, companies were uh, lethargic in managing their working capital and there is a slight increase in all the three figures days sales outstanding days payable outstanding days inventory outstanding so somewhere it has been felt by the management of these leading companies even that it is not so essential to you know to work in the direction of process optimization and uh, somehow bring efficiency in the um, routine business operations and try to reduce uh, day sales outstanding days inventory outstanding as much as possible uh, so and that is something which is uh, being reflected on this slide and at the same time this also indicates that companies relied heavily in 2019 on leveraging external financing programs rather than doing the heavy lifting of structural process redesign just the availability of cheap cash has meant that uh, there hasn't been that burning platform to assess the organization nonetheless now moving forward post covid times i would like to draw your attention to um, what impact this black swan event covid-19 had on the business world all of us uh, are aware about the kind of repercussions covid-19 had uh, in the global business environment and um, uh, i mean uh, you talk about the supply chain issues you talk about the rising working capital requirements you talk about the liquidity crunch and you talk about the requirements for process optimization which uh, till the previous year 2019 20 businesses were thinking that they can afford to have the cheap finances available and hence they were not uh, paying too much attention on process optimization hence uh, even before covid-19 growth in the global economy had slowed slowed the crushing impact of the pandemic just accelerated that trend the after effect of this global shock wave and its impact on working capital availability can turn out to be truly disastrous for certain industries Additionally payments and rising inventories have been highlighted amongst large corporates working capital requirements increased by 5 days plus to 74 days 8 trillion dollars of additional financing needs worldwide have uh, been uh, recorded since the outbreak of covid-19 we have witnessed unprecedented steps from regulators to take swift actions to encourage banks to provide much needed fiscal relief or a liquidity lifeline to the private sector banks have been steadily beefing up the provisions in the light of the pandemic and the subsequent rise in defaults debt servicing becomes the next big question for corporations of all sizes according to the 2020 cfo the hackett group working capital scorecard the 1000 largest us companies had lots of room for improvement nearly 1.3 trillion dollars in capital needlessly tied up in receivables payables and inventory about 10% of their combined 2019 revenue fast forward to mid 2020 the international covid-19 crisis and the resulting economic fallout have raised the importance of process standardization and optimization so now let me again bring you back to the important issues involved in working capital management these are just two so the manager is or the firm or the manager or the business person is expected to just be considered about these two questions when it comes to working capital management what is the appropriate amount and mix of current assets for the firms to hold and how should these current assets be financed so basically it is about uh, what should be the amount of investment in the various current assets and how these current assets should be financed using various short term sources of funding uh, let me tell you one thing sound working capital goes much beyond finance it is not just restricted to the field of financial management or finance in fact it is an outcome of operational efficiency as we've been discussing experts in logistics operations management and i 
and IT often work with engineers and production managers to develop methods to improve manufacturing process which may help in reducing the process time and thereby capital stuck in WIP inventory. Similarly, marketing people along with logistics experts are constantly striving to deliver goods to customers in minimum possible time. Finance comes into play in evaluating how effective these operating departments are relative to the industry practices. CFOs are also responsible for the financing needs of these working capital requirements. They take such decisions as to what should be the quantum of short-term financing and also the cash balance to be maintained by the business. When it comes to current assets management or about the first question, first issue when it comes to working capital management, the first question is how much to invest in the various current assets individually as well as collectively. The firm needs to be cautious about the money it is blocking in the various items of current assets. Still, it also depends on the temperament, on the attitude of the management uh, of that firm towards the risk-taking capacity. Higher the risk-taking capacity, more aggressive is the management style. Now, if we talk about the level of current assets investment in terms of policy, the policy can be conservative uh, or aggressive. These are the two extremes of continuum. And of course, practically speaking, the businesses or the managers fall uh, on this line anywhere depending on the risk taking capacity or their attitude towards risk. So when I talk about the flexible policy, uh, it suits the managers who have conservative temperament. Uh, it uh, ensures that liquidity is on a higher side. Inventories are more than sufficient in go downs and liberal credit terms are offered to debtors and um, it requires high amount of investment in debtors. A flexible uh, policy results in fewer production stoppages, ensures quicker deliveries to customers and stimulates sales. But however, higher investment in current assets will have a negative impact on profitability. Um, so high liquidity will have the negative impact on profitability. So we can see that there is a kind of inverse relationship between liquidity and profitability. Talking about the efficiency. So when you talk about the efficiency, we've been discussing that efficiency uh, is uh, gauged with the help of turnover ratios. So if a company is following flexible policy, it is uh, uh, having a very uh, laid back kind of attitude, laid by, back kind of policy. So it will have lower efficiency. It will have lower turnover ratios. Talking about restrictive policy. Restrictive policy uh, means you, the manager will invest only the amount which he considers appropriate, not more than required. So it is just appropriate. That means minimal level of investment required in the working capital um, is uh, done. So it will, of course, have the impact on the liquidity. Liquidity will be on the lower side uh, and inventories will be of the smaller order. And since stringent policies are followed in terms of giving credit to the customers, debtors investment will also be on a lower side. So a restrictive policy leads to a more production uh, to more production stoppages, delayed deliveries to customers and lost sales but lower investment in current uh, assets. But at the same time, it promises to be um, uh, yielding more profits because of the lower investment in current assets and more efficient as well. And hence, this policy will also depict um, higher turnover ratios. One more dimension of flexible and restrictive uh, policies of managing current assets is uh, the impact on carrying cost and shortage cost. When a firm follows flexible policy, flexible means it will have too much of capital uh, invested in current assets. That means all of us know that capital is not for free. We incur a cost of capital. So carrying cost will be on a higher side for uh, firms with flexible policy. However, uh, talking about restrictive policy, uh, here, the firm is just trying to ensure minimum investment in uh, current assets items. Hence, there is a possibility of, uh, you know, uh, stock outs 
uh, the customer might come in and I might not be able to sell that item or sometimes my production may get hindered because of shortage of raw material inventory. So shortage cost will result in the case of restrictive policy. So uh, a manager is required to somehow balance these two extremes and uh, try to have the policy wherein a balance of carrying cost and shortage cost is achieved. So when you talk about working capital management strategies, uh, a kind of trade-off is required to be done between uh, the sum of carrying cost and the sum of shortage cost. So the optimal level of the investment in current assets is the one wherein uh, we are incurring minimum amount of carrying cost and shortage cost. The optimal current assets investment strategy will depend on the relative magnitudes of carrying cost and shortage cost. This conflict is often referred to as the working capital trade-off. Financial managers need to balance short, uh, shortage cost against carrying cost to define an optimal strategy. If carrying costs are larger than shortage cost, then the firm will maximize value by adopting a more restrictive strategy. On the other hand, if shortage costs dominate carrying costs, the firm will need to move towards a more flexible policy. Uh, coming on to the second question of working capital management, that means uh, what uh, are the sources which should be used, uh, how much of long term, how much of short term in funding these current assets. So we have three strategies and as I told you earlier, whenever I say conservative aggressive, actually there are two extremes of the continuum and a business firm can fall uh, on any point on these continuum. So the maturity matching strategy is the first one, which is a moderate strategy wherein the assets and liabilities are matched as per the tenors of the uh, assets and liabilities. Uh, Long-term funding strategy is about when the manager wants to uh, use uh, mostly long-term sources of funding for financing its business, whether it is a long-term requirement or a short-term requirement. That means all the, all the requirements of working capital are funded out of long-term sources. Uh, talking about the short-term funding strategy, it's aggressive in nature when the manager wants to use a huge amount of short-term funding sources to finance its working capital requirement. Now, if you see the uh, picture uh, on the screen, it is depicting the three strategies. The first one, matured matching strategy, reflects that uh, the firm will be financing its permanent working capital and fixed assets using long-term funds. And for its seasonal working capital requirements, it will be uh, relying on short-term Borrowings. So seasonal working requ capital requirements are the ones um, based on uh, the peak seasons. There are businesses which have their peak seasons. Um, for instance, toy industry sees its peak sales in the month of November and December. Um, jewelry uh, in Indian context sees its peaks in the months of uh, Diwali. Uh, so things like and uh, talking about the winter garments, there are winter months in which there is a peak sale happening. So those are the seasonal uh, seasons which require additional investment of working capital to fund the enhanced level of sales occurring in those months. Talking about long-term funding strategy, uh, so the manager is not at all ready to take any risk and wants to contract a long-term debt or have sufficient equity funds to take care of all the investments in current assets as well as fixed assets, including the ones which are seasonal in nature, which may be required for just one or two or three months. Talking about the short-term funding strategy, the manager believes that some part of current assets should be funded out of the uh, short-term sources and uh, some part of uh, working capital requirement should be funded out of long-term sources as you could see. Now, I would like to share with you some of the uh, common sources of short-term financing. When it comes to current liabilities or short-term financing sources, they can be categorized into spontaneous and non-spontaneous sources. So accounts payable is a spontaneous source because it comes into picture because of routine business operations. So uh, because I am doing the purchases and hence accounts payable comes into picture. But then if I specifically contract a short-term loan or I go for a factoring uh, arrangement with a banker, uh, by you know against my debtors 
that is a non spontaneous source so uh, more of the control is on non spontaneous sources and spontaneous sources arise on its own and creditors terms can't be dictated by the business they are set by the uh, suppliers and the norms of that industry but of course when you talk about the accounts payable there is some amount of prerogative for the manager in terms of deciding whether to take advantage of the cash discount or wait and pay in full when the account is due the second source which is commonly being used is accounts receivable financing a company can secure a bank loan by pledging the firm's accounts receivable as a security this is more common in the case of service firms accounts receivable financing is an important source of funds for a medium sized and small businesses a second way for a business to finance itself with accounts receivables called factoring is to sell the receivables to a factor at a discount the firm that sells the receivable has no further legal obligation to the factor the third is bank loans if the and of course short term bank loans we are talking about the short term sources if the firm backs the loan with an asset the loan is defined as secured otherwise the loan is unsecured secured loan should allow the borrower to borrow at a lower interest rate an informal line of credit is a verbal agreement between the firm and the bank allowing the firm to borrow up to an agreed upon limit a formal line of credit is also known as revolving credit under this type of agreement the bank has a legal obligation to lend an amount of money to a preset limit the firm pays a yearly fee on unutilized amount in addition to the interest expense on the amount they borrow and talking about uh, one more source of short term financing prominently being used by big business houses commercial paper it's a promissory note issued by large financially secured firms that have high credit ratings commercial paper is not secured but most commercial papers are back issues are backed by a credit line from a commercial bank the default rate on commercial paper is very low resulting in an interest rate that is usually lower than what a bank would charge on a direct loan so that was all in the topic of working capital management for the time being in our upcoming videos we are going to learn about debtors management inventory management cash management to understand the nuances of the topic of working capital management till then bye bye take care